have to think is you have to put yourself in place of the viewer and just try to understand where their site is going to go first and put all your effort there. As I said also a couple of times on, on the videos, you're a director here and your main job is to pretty much like a, an illusionist is to guide the sight of the viewer to the point you want them to look. And if you get blocked in any of the parts of the drawing, just don't spend that much time on it because it could ruin your concentration and it could ruin your workflow. If something doesn't come out, just go for something else and you'll come back later. And I'm going to insist a lot on this idea too. Your time is valuable and precious and you need to make a good use of it. So don't get mad if something doesn't come out as you expect it. Just go for something else and you'll come back later for it. Notice how as I keep inking, everything becomes more gestural and more accurate. On the face of this character, I was erasing a lot. I was using a lot uh, Control Z. Like more and more, I'll be I'll be just doing very precise strokes. This character is nearly done. We're gonna go for the following one. As you can see, I I study very well the uh, amount of detail I can put on the rough because, I, as I said too, if I do a rough that is too detailed, then inking is gonna be like tracing exactly the same that I did. So I always try to leave a bit of uh, place for improvisation because every step of the process of making comics has to add something. If you're working on something and you feel like it's it's not really adding anything to the whole process, you probably have to skip that step. It tends to happen, especially when you start, that you want to make, you want to be very sure about what you do, and uh, you want to be, you want to have a perfect drawing once you start uh, inking. What usually happens with that is that that step becomes more and more tedious until you realize that what you have to do is ink um, straight away. It's just, uh, it's just a leap of faith to say it so, uh, to say it somehow it's just more the fact that you believe on your capacities as an artist and think okay yeah this is what comes out this is the uh this is the my style this is my ink and it might not be perfect but this is what i come out and i'm not gonna repeat the same drawings over and over or i will not be tracing myself for the next 10 20 30 years on the next part of this video, we're going to get into more detailed uh, explanations about the whole process of inking from zero. On this one, I just want you to pay attention to what's the usual process and where do I put most of the effort. You have to think about the fact that the brain is a sort of a a phase detector you can detect any minimal variation on the face of someone because we our brains are designed to read emotions so having that in mind you have to pay as much attention as as you can on that The good part of this is that uh, inking digitally, you can always go back. Um, it's true that you lose a bit of, um, of these nice accidents, as I call them, that happen sometimes when you're inking. Like 
stuff that you couldn't predict but it it kind of adds some spontaneity or some some artistic value to the drawing but in exchange what you get is that you can correct what you're doing anytime and you can go back and just um, try something different work in a different layer also something I, I tend to do is to uh, make each character in a different layer because sometimes the uh, the model the uh, the size of the character is not accurate uh, in regards to the original model so uh, if it's in a different layer I can just transform it and adapt it to uh, a better uh, proportions also something I would advise you is once you have the model of your characters uh, print it and post it next to your computer so you can you have it always handy to have a look because otherwise you're gonna keep transforming your characters and at the end of your comic they're gonna look like absolutely different